All right, here we go. Salute to Knicks Nation on this Wednesday morning, or Wednesday afternoon. Another edition of KFTV, a special edition of Knicks Fan TV. Joining us today is a special guest. He is currently the head basketball coach of the Indiana Hoosiers basketball team, but we all know him here in New York as Coach Woodson, the former coach, former player of the New York Knicks. Coach, welcome to Knicks Fan TV. Thanks again for joining us. Well, thanks for having me. I appreciate you. Absolutely. Like I said, it's an honor to have you on. And uh, currently speaking on these Knicks, they, they are making a ton of moves. Leon Rose, Tom Thibodeau, they are making their push to be a true contender in the NBA. And it's uh, they landed a blockbuster trade in Carl Anthony Towns. What was your reaction when, when you heard about the trade? It's a big move. Uh, you know, I think it's a guy that they've kept their eyes on over the years and uh, Leon has had a, a nice relationship with the big fella. And, you know, I think it's a great move. You know, you hate to see Julius go, you know, I got nothing but love and respect for Julius cause I had an opportunity to coach him and he works at his craft. And that's why you see the body of work that he's put in displayed on the basketball floor. But, you know, as you know, in this business, trades are made all the time and you just got to hope that you make the right move for your ball club. Uh, and I think Townsend is a great talent and I think he'll be, he'll fit right in. Uh, when you, when you're running alongside Brunson and Brunson is running the show, Brunson has figured it out. I mean, he's a hell of a player, man. And he's figured out how to get players around him to play at a high level. And, and he's, he's playing Beautiful basketball, I think, in terms of what he's done for the Knicks since he's been there. And um, I think it's a good move for him, though. I do. When you when they met at uh, Media Day just a couple of days ago, the key theme that keeps keeps being brought up is uh, spacing with this town's acquisition. And specifically, I'm, I'm looking to see a more fruitful duo between Brunson and Towns. From a spacing standpoint, how do you see those two guys operating and, and being effective? Well, he's shown he can make the long ball. Um, and, you know, that seems like that league, everybody's putting up threes all over the place. Uh, but it's still going to be the supporting cast that he has around him uh, that makes it all work. And and Brunson is kind of the guy who, who triggers everything for the Knicks. And I just like, you know, how he competes on a night in and night out basis. But uh, Townsend will space. Uh, I'm sure they'll post him a little bit, but, you know, they brought him there specifically to space the floor and make threes, and that's what he's pretty damn good at. And with the acquisition of Mikal Bridges, OG Ananobi has just re-signed. Tom likes the wing versatility. You add Josh Hart to that mix. What do you make of the Knicks' wing depth now and how they can compete in the East and beyond? Well, Bridges getting him I, th I thought was a big pickup, uh, Oh, geez, you know, he's played well since he's been there. You know, he, he had the, the the injury, but he's back healthy, I hear. And um, I just think it's going to take the supporting cast, just like they played last season to play at a high level night in and night out, you know, to make it happen. But I think they got nice pieces in play. play. Uh, I don't know where uh, Mitchell is right now in terms of, you know, his injuries, but they're going to need him as they continue the journey as well because he, he's a defensive force inside that can do a lot of things for your ball club. No, no question about it. When you returned as an assistant coach in the 2020 season, what was the thought process? What, what was that call like from either Tom or Leon to, to bring you back into the fold? Well, again, they gave me an opportunity, um, you know, after I got let go in L.A. with the uh, Clippers they gave me an opportunity to, to come back to New York and work. And, you know, that's all you can ask for. And uh, so, you know, I, I tip my hat to Tibbs and Leon and, and Jim Dolan and Wes for giving me the opportunity to come back and, and continue to work and, and, and work at a spot where I'm very familiar with and, I didn't know Tibbs very well at that time. I, you know, I competed against him from a coaching standpoint all these years, and uh, it was really a treat to work with Tibbs because he is a basketball junkie. You want to play, Rasheed? 
You want to play some? Let's go. You know, one of the uh, the clips that that we play on our social media uh, channels is a clip from the 2012-13 season opening night. Knicks against the the big three of the Heat. Rasheed Wallace getting his Garden uh, uh, debut, and it's a clip of you going to Rasheed and asking him if he wants to play, and the crowd goes crazy. That is one of the most viral videos that that we put out there. Do you remember anything from that that moment and, and th that Garden reaction? You know, I have nothing but respect for Rasheed. Um, you know, I rode that roller coaster with him in Detroit, man, and damn, he was along with Ben Wallace and the supporting cast, Chauncey and Rip and Tayshawn. Boy, it was cordless. I mean, it was just a beautiful thing to, to be a part of and to get the opportunity to bring him back with me uh, to the garden. I mean, it doesn't get any better than that. He didn't. You know, he could have said, hell, I, I'm good, coach. But he got up off the bench, man, and the fans. I mean, it was it was just a beautiful scene uh, to have him going. Even when we knew the game was already out of reach, uh, he still stepped on professionally and, and helped his ball club continue to, to, to play and finish the ball game. But the fans were, they were phenomenal. I mean, unbelievable. They've always been that way. Yeah. <laughs> No, no question about it. And, you know, you, you coach this team for, for two and a half years as, as the head coach. Player after player who I've spoken to, from Rasheed to Kenyon Martin, Mike Bibby, uh, Raymond Felton, you know, I, I ask all these guys about you and unanimously, you know, it's nothing but high praise. What does that mean to you to have that love from all these players? And what does that say about you as, you know, being like a, a player's coach? Well, it, it means a lot, man. I think, you know... When I first started out in coaching, you know, you kind of have to make your way. And when I got the head coaching job in Atlanta and was able to to build that team over the six years that ownership gave me the opportunity to build, um, it, it's a respect factor. You know, I, I played in this league, uh, you know, in that league 11 years, man. And, um, and I played against some of the greatest players that ever walked that, that floor and uh, all you ask players when you coach them is to respect what you do. And cause I respect them because it's, it's a beautiful profession if you treat it the right way. And um, you know, I have nothing but praises for the NBA because I've spent 34 years of my life. Hell I'm six, I'm 67 years old, man. And I've spent over half, half of my life in that league as a player and coach. So, I mean to be able to coach NBA players and 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 share some knowledge, you know. And you're not always right, you know. You're not always wrong, but if you can get your players to buy in and believe in what you're doing, on and off the court, because I'm a big stickler when it comes to that, because I think it all goes hand in hand. Um, then you have a chance to win, and I, I thought when. When when Mike stepped down and and Jim gave me the opportunity to to take the team over, I made it very clear that you know I was a no nonsense coach and you know you've heard grumblings probably uh, that hey Woody was you know somewhat light on certain guys that that wasn't true you know Mello was coached hard. Um, you know, I just I didn't believe in showing favoritism because no one ever showed me favoritism. And and a lot of the teams that I played for, I was one of the best players on the team. So you expect to be coached. So uh, that's how I was brought up. And and that's how I still coach today. I mean, I coach to win and I coach to push guys in the right direction and and, and get them better. And and and, and in return. Hopefully we win a lot of games because that's what it's all about. When you took over for Mike D'Antoni in, in that uh, in that 2011 season, what, what was that adjustment like going in, as an interim coach? Because that was the first time you had done that. You had been a head coach your, your most of your career, but to step in in an interim role, different styles with the players, like, what was that adjustment like? I didn't look at it in that light. You know, the fact, you know, my, my bones were made in Atlanta, you know, when I – I came in and they gave me the job to, 
to build that team. Um, so I felt good about my role when Jim asked me, did I want to take the job? Um, and then the fact that, you know, I had played there. I was drafted by the Knicks in, in 80. And, you know, we we won 50 games, and that just wasn't good enough, man, you know, under Red Holzman that year. And uh, so I knew the dynamics of the, the fan base, the media. Uh, it wasn't – that wasn't new to me. Um, it was just – me walking in a situation uh, halfway through where, you know, we had to make a move uh, uh, to get the team even thinking about the playoffs. And, and they jumped on board and, 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 and bought into what we were doing. Uh, and we were able to salvage that season and make the playoffs. And then in the following season, you have the 54 wins. Carmelo third in the MVP voting. You move him to the four. You bring in a significant veterans and Kidd and Rasheed Wallace, Marcus Camby coming back. Uh, but they fell short uh, against that that Pacer team in, in the second round. Where do you think things went wrong in, with that series? Well, I take I got to take you know full you know blame for that. I've never shied away from that. Um, you know. We rolled the dice and bringing an older veteran team in there in the beginning, which I thought was the right thing to do along with Glenn Grunwald. And and Jim gave us, you know, his blessings on it. And I just thought Melo needed some veteranship around him. Um, the supporting cast was there with him and Amari and, and Tyson, but we needed, you know, better guard play. And that's why I went with Kidd and, and, and Raymond and, Pablo and, we, and Bob Pablo Prigioni and and it and it was a good mixture. It's just that when we came down the stretch run, you know, our key one of our key bigs, which was Tyson, you know, he he got sick, and and that wasn't a good look going into that series. Um, and you got to tip your hat to the Pacers, man, because we had played them great throughout the the regular season, but as you know, playoffs is, is a whole different atmosphere. And, you know, we up 16 in the first game early and came out with great intentions and, and we let it, we let it get away and came back to the second game and played great. I mean, it was kind of a blowout and I thought we could really go in and steal one back and, but the Pacers were they were nasty and stingy, man. They Tough just team. weren't they weren't gonna let it happen. And a barrage of threes by the Knicks. Now, now Shepard gone back to the bench. I wonder if he was coming in for JR. Anthony attacks oh. Hibbert! Denies him at the rim. Block number five for the Pacers center. Wow, oh, what a play. Oh man, what a some kind of block. Great back cut there. J.R. Smith caught watching the basketball. And Stevenson again making his presence felt. You know, I recall the in game six where, you know, Melo had the layup and Hilbert came from nowhere and made a great play on the ball. And, you know, we score there. It's it's probably a different series. We come home and possibly wrap it up. But that's how playoff basketball is. But I take blame for that, man. I because I truly believe that was the team to 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 really make some noise and and get to the finals, and I just couldn't get them over the hump. Yeah, tough, tough one, tough one indeed. Uh, you know, when you think about your, your coaching history, you you played under Red Holtzman, you worked with Larry Brown, some legendary names. How did their coaching style shape your philosophy over the years? Well, it started back, you know, really. It, my my young tutelage under my high school coach Bill Smith and and Bob Knight uh, kind of set set the tone in terms and and shaping my whole career as a basketball player. And you know when I got into coaching and I started working for various coaches like Chris Ford and and George Carl and Randy Whitman. Um, when I got to Larry Brown. He taught me the right way, man. He just is, you know, and that's no knock against the other coaches. He just taught me how to prepare and mm. and 
and take it more serious in terms of my approach to players on and off the court. Uh, you know, in my early days in coaching, I was still in that player's mentality. And if you're going to coach this game, you got to coach and go all the way with it. And I thought Larry put set the table when I worked for him in Philly. And and I just kind of spun a lot of things that I had learned from Larry from that point on. Uh, and when I left Philly and joined him in Detroit, it was it was a beautiful run, man. And and so from that point on, I felt you know pretty good about you know my uh, everyday approach to coaching and trying to get players to do the right things on and off the court. So when I got to Atlanta, it was a learning curve because we had such a young team, but ownership gave me an opportunity to build it and we went from 13 wins to 53 wins and with that young team and they were exciting team uh to watch uh and then i was able to come back home to to new york yeah there you go and as we segue to iu now was there a big adjustment for you in your first year from from coaching pros to, to coaching uh student athletes yeah it's always an adjustment when you when you start something new that you've never done, you know, I think coaching is coaching, but, you know, college is a little different. You know, I, I tell this story all the time when I, after I did my press conference, you know, I gave this all-star speech, you know, to the players that were still here in uniform. And I asked everybody who wanted to stay on board to raise their hand. And all the walk-ons raised their hand. They're the only ones. <laughs> I, so I'm like, oh, shit, this is devastating, man. I mean, you know, we had a bunch of disgruntled players starting at the top with Trace Jackson Davis. Mm -hmm. And I'm I'm sitting here begging, guys, you, you know, I'm new. You got to give me an opportunity. You know, I mean, I'm not, you know, what's happened in the past is behind us. And, you know, we have to move forward. So... I started at the top. I, I sat down with Trace and his family and got him to commit and come back and be on board with me. And then everybody else seemed to fall in place. And then we were able to, you know, take that team and 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 take them to the tournament, which they hadn't, you know, gone in some some years. And so it's been a good run. You know, last year was kind of a a down year, and uh, you know. As a coach, you know, it falls, you know, strictly on my shoulders and I didn't get it done in terms of uh, getting this team, you know, to the tournament. But we've made a lot of changes this summer in terms of our ball club based on the dynamics of what college basketball presents these days. And uh, I think we put a, a pretty good team together. I just got to put it all together and see where it leads us. Yeah, that, that's certainly interesting because you're going from the NBA where your reputation is established and, and it's clean with the, with the players, the players are repping you, and then you go to the college and it's almost falling on deaf ears. So that I, I could imagine that was certainly a challenge. And as you mentioned, uh, you lose a number of players last offseason. Kalel Ware, I got a chance to see him in summer league, looks looks pretty good for the Miami Heat. Uh, what is that challenge with integrating? You got six transfers here of a freshman. What, what's that challenge of integrating these players uh, into your current uh, roster? Well, it was that way day one coming in. I mean, we brought in, I think, the first year four players to our roster, new players. Um, and though that was through the portal. And then the second year, we brought in five players. And then this after this season, I had three players to leave me to go to the portal. And I graduated two seniors. And then where got drafted to the, the Miami Heat. So I had seven scholarships, you know, at my, you know, in my hand that I had to go out and, and start fresh and, and basically go through the portal and which we did. And my staff did a beautiful job and, and helping me, uh, you know, go land like big ballo from Arizona, the big center, which we needed a center, you know, after where had left. And we needed guard play, perimeter play, and we were able to go get Miles Rice from, you know, from Washington uh, State, and we got 
Kane and Carlisle from Stanford. I mean, I was going all over the place. We got Luke Goody from Illinois and um, the thing in Hatton from a little small school up here in, in Louisville. Uh, I mean, we was just reaching, man. And then the kid Bryson Tucker kind of, the freshman kind of fell in our laps, you know. Mm. Dad and I had a talk. I flew into to, uh, Baltimore to uh, – to, to meet with his dad in the DC area. And one thing led to a, another, and we were able to get a five-star player in, in Bryson Tucker, the only freshman uh, that we have. Uh, so, I mean, we got a big seven footer Dallas James from Florida, you know, who's kind of a, uh, a kid that, that that's got some skill set, but, he needs a lot of work and you know, I'm hoping, you know, once he get about a good month under us, under him, that he's able to contribute uh, behind Balo a little bit, but um, we got a, a, a nice mixture of players for our ball club and I just got to put it all together. They've been working their butts off since we started official practice on the 25th. So I I'm, I'm pleased where we are, but we still got a long way to go. There you go. Uh, with with where was was he ever someone that uh, that the Knicks inquired about? I, I know they were looking at centers in the draft. Was, was where one of those on their radar? Yeah, he was on the radar, but again, nobody really knew. I didn't. I know we sh- surely didn't know. You know how high he would go in the draft. Uh, he was called to the green room, which is a good a good sign. But you never know there as well. You know mm-hmm. you can sit there all 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 the picks and and, and not be drafted. So. You know, we were happy for him and his family because, you know, it was a bad rap coming out of, out of uh, Oregon when he when we got him, and and it was work in progress. You know, it took us about a month to really shape him up and get him where we thought he should be playing and and playing at a high level, and it carried on on through the the ball season, and uh, you know, he had a good. A good year, man. I mean, he he played extremely well for us. I was just, I'm so proud of how he performed, and and it it paid off for him. You know, he was able to be the 15th player picked in the draft. Just a couple of quick ones for you here, Coach. I know you have to run to practice. You know, NILs has been a hot topic over the last few years, and uh, there was a coaches poll that was conducted over the summer, and they rated Indiana's uh, NIL program to be one of, one of the best in uh in college athletics what do you make of you know the programs that you guys have implemented there and and uh overall how that's evolved well i won't comment a whole lot about it i just know that we we've been in a good space you know for nil as well as a lot of schools you know i mean that's that's you know that's where we are man and um you know i didn't walk into college thinking you know that this was going to happen but it's what it is, man. And, you know, you, it kind of reminds me of being in the NBA a little bit, you know, you're going to have to, you know, have an NIL space, uh, until they make changes. Um, you know, I know this ref sharing is, is a big topic right now as well. Um, you know, I'm, I don't know where we are, you know, when it comes to that right now, because there's a lot of decisions that has to be made, but, we have been in a good space in terms of, of our NIL program. And, uh, you know, I hope we're able to, you know, stay in that space. There you go. And, and final one for you here. You know, the fans are, are highly anticipating this interview. You've been a beloved figure here for the two and a half years that you were here. Well, plus, plus the season under Tibbs as the assistant, as well as as a player in, in uh, the 1980 season. Uh, what are you most proud of d- during your time here in New York? Just, you know, the fan base, you know, you know, and I had my ups and downs. You you recall that last year it wasn't real, it wasn't real pleasant uh, when Phil came in there. But again, injuries, injury bugs killed that whole team. Um, and then when we figured it out and got a lot of the guys back, we made a a nice run at the end. But it just wasn't good enough. And and you know, I wasn't Phil's guy at that at that time. And he he decided to go in a different direction, which you know. I've been around long enough to know the sport and, and how it how it works. So, but you know the fact that 
the fans have always, I think, always been there for me. Uh, it, it says a lot. Uh, I have nothing but love for the Knicks and the fan base and Jim Dolan, you know, who I think gets a bad rap. I love Jim Dolan and, and what he stands for. And, uh, you know, he tries to do all the right things by his ball club. And, you know, when he's financially doing the right things, I mean, what more else can you say? So I'm, uh, I'm a big supporter of Jim Dolan's, uh, uh, he let me come home and, and fulfill a dream that maybe some owners and coaches would not have allowed, but he he did that for me, and I have nothing but love for him and Leon and that organization. So uh, I wish him nothing but the best. My eyes are always on on the Knicks and and, and their well being, and let's go win a let's go win an NBA championship, Knicks. That's how I look at it. A absolutely well, well coach I, I definitely appreciate the time i know this is a busy time trying to get the team together so i appreciate you carving out some time for us and best of luck to you guys i know the the preseason opener is uh coming shortly on the on the 18th so um best of luck to you and hopefully we can do this again no problem man much love for you too my brother you keep doing your thing all right take care coach hey you too man take care nice seeing you absolutely keep Keep that beard intact, hey, man. Yeah, I, I, hey, as you said, keep your barber. <laughs> it, the barber is the key, right? <laughs> it looks good, boy. Yeah, no. All right. Stay All blessed, right. Coach. Thank you. All right.